Yo, 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 what's going on, Team 20? I hope you're all super well. Welcome to episode 31 to 3. Is it 3? Yeah. I forgot what I just said. Yeah, yes, 33. 33. <laughs> 33, okay, cool. So, I'm here with Jay again. How you going, mate? I'm good, mate. How are you? Let me know. I, I'm alright. Let me know if you guys are enjoying Jay on these episodes. I feel like we both have different insights in things, so it makes things interesting. Got a what bit you of got an there? Australian twist today, mate. Yeah, taking through it. What just, is it? Just a bit of Milo. Milk and Milo. Good old Milo. Good stuff. So... First off, first question. Hey, I would love to hear what Jay did as a heavier player to drop weight and progress to where he is now. That comes from Coach One. So, do you want to take them through a brief, very brief backstory of your weight and yeah. what you did to get to where you are? And so, I was always like a pretty heavy kid when I was younger. Uh huh. Not like massive, not like obese or anything like that, but I was always pretty big. Um, and then I was, I think I was in year seven, but no, year eight at school. And I got injured in a game, broke my ankle. Right. Um, and then I was out for like three months, three or four months. And I, like obviously as a kid you don't realise you're putting on weight. So I just like ate like I normally would. Usually being a pretty active kid and I gained quite a bit of weight. And I got up to about 80 kilos I think. 80, so I'm just trying to keep talking, I'm going to transfer that. <laughs> yeah, so I was 80 kilos. Um, 176 pounds. Yeah. Uh, I think I was. I probably would have been five foot seven, five foot eight at the time. And what, how old? I forget. I uh, was year eight, so I don't even know how old it is. It's like 14, 13, 14. Yeah, something quite young. Yeah. Right. Um, and then I was wanting to get back into football. Obviously, when I got came back from the injury, um, and I was like, it was a constant thing that I was too big, sort of thing. So I, my parents invested in me and got got me a personal trainer for ten weeks. A football related personal trainer? Or just, no, just a, a personal trainer. Right, yeah. Um, it, it was expensive. It wasn't like over overpriced, but it was expensive for what it was. Of course. Um, but now me and the trainer are like lifelong friends, so yeah. so good. I lost uh, 10 kilos in that, that 10 weeks period. What do you think it came down to? The work or the diet? I just wanted it. I don't know. It was a bit of everything. A bit of everything, yeah. Yeah, I think I just cut out a lot of the sweet stuff yeah you've got to kind of combine them both and then yeah. work from there because it's like you can do the gym stuff but if it's not there's no food it's not going to balance and it's going to fall over oh, you need to get them. also it was hard to, it's hard to have a plan when you're 14 like the plan out like I'm going to eat this yeah. I'm going to go buy this and have this for tea it's just like you just got to do it and yeah and I, I sort of did it and hope for the best sort of thing just tried my best and a lot, I feel like a lot of kids as well they come up with the excuse that oh, I live in a household where my parents have this food it's like well if you really want to lose weight, you there's nothing stopping you from saying to your parents, I want this, mm. or if it's that bad and they're not doing it, you going and working and buying your own food, at least some healthy food so that you can balance your diet. Yeah. Like anything else is just an excuse. Yeah, and then after those after those 10 weeks, I I think I gained a little bit back, not like a lot, like a lot of it, probably like two, three kilos. Yeah. Um, and then I just eventually, when I left school, just got proper into fitness and stuff like that and lost a lot of weight and then gained a bit more weight, gained a bit of muscle and then yeah, that's where I am now. Right, so there you go, a lot of hard work, really. Yeah. Right, ready. bang, first question done, second one. Okay, this one, I think it was for me because it was on an episode where I was only in it, you weren't yeah. in it. But it says, do you think you made the correct decision to drop out of school at the time you did? That comes in from Luca Dambruoso. Now, I have no idea where these guys got the idea I dropped out of school. Mm -hmm. um, I never dropped out of school. I finished. Uh, I just really don't like the idea of going to university. I never did and I probably never will because mm. I think it's that's a whole other topic. But... Um, at heart and mind, I'm an entrepreneur. I want to work for myself. I worked five weeks at an IGA, and I'm like, man, why am I working for someone else and making them money? Yeah, yeah. So the only time I said to myself, the only time I want to work for someone else now is when I'm in a football situation, like when I'm playing for a club and they're paying me and I'm working for yeah. them, or when I'm a coach. Uh, that's the only time. But you know, maybe somewhere along the line, I'm going to have to in order to live, of course. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, so. Do you want to take them through? Because you've told me you've dropped out of school and yeah. do you think it was the right decision? I dropped out late. So I dropped out in my last year of school. Um, I think it was like five or six days before my, what was it, 17th birthday? Right. Um, and yeah, I, I dropped out because I was always a decent student in school. Like 
all the way through up until like year 11 I was getting good grades and then mm -hmm. in year 12 I was taking football a lot more seriously and doing a lot more training and the study and the football wasn't adding up and I had to basically pick one and I was fortunate enough to have parents that were open-minded enough to yeah. let me pursue what I wanted to pursue and knowing that I had a bit of a backup plan even though like even if it didn't work out yeah um, it made them feel a little more comfortable about it. Yeah, so do you think, like... Do I, I think th I made the correct decision? Yeah. Yes. Do you think, though, <laughs> that if you want to pursue football, you have to quit school? No. Why did you then? Because I ran out of hours in the day and to how? do both. Why? Because I, I, if I'm one of those people that if I'm going to do something, I want to do it 100%. Right. So if I want to do... Football, what I do, 100% football. If I want to do school, I'm going to do 100% school. And there was not enough hours in the day for me to study the three, four hours that you meant to do yeah. in 12 and train the three, four hours that you meant to do as a footballer. Yeah, right. See, I just ran out of time. For me, I, I don't think I ever did three or four hours study a day. Yeah. I just kind of go along with it, got yeah. it done, because I think it's something where. I don't know. I don't agree with school. I mm. think it's so outdated. I think university is outdated. It all needs to change. Um, because the world's changing. Yeah, like, I, I think there's a lot of things that you can do without a degree. Yeah. But, like, I don't know, it just doesn't make sense to me. So, I, I guess I finished it just to finish it, and Dad was like, yeah, finish it. Yeah. I was like, yeah, right, whatever. I, did, I, did, I could have, like, finished it, but I wouldn't have done the like any of the work for it so it wouldn't yeah. have, like it wouldn't have meant anything to me i've just been in school for an extra three literally that's all i have and i stayed an extra year but because i did mine over two years but getting the trial at Leicester city literally wouldn't have happened if i had been in school yeah so, so <laughs> it's a it's a balance and yeah. it just because that happened with jay doesn't mean you drop out of school no like, don't you need to assess your situation and see like is this the best option? No, well, I don't know. Are you good enough at football to actually do that? Yeah. Like, if you're messy, then yeah, look, if you drop out of school, it's probably not the biggest deal. Yeah, yeah. But if you're some kid who's absolutely horrible, then look, you might have to consider it and be like, you know what, maybe it's a good thing to have a backup plan, yeah. you can call it, because I might make it in football, there's still a chance. If you're that kid that isn't very good at all, mm. there's still a chance you might make it, but you have this backup plan as well. So that's and another thing. I probably if you're going to if you're considering dropping out of school, definitely go talk with lots of people. Yeah, like older than me, so they have a bit more experience. And people that might be in the football world or people that aren't in the football world mm. that have dropped out of school. Like I was lucky. Um, both my parents didn't end up finishing their high school, and they did. They've done all right in life. Yeah. So I was able to get advice from them, and then also people that aren't your mates and stuff like that talking to like counsellors and asking their advice and what they think. Yeah. It's always a bit but I think the biggest thing to take away is, again, I'm going to say it, don't just drop out of school because you want to focus on football. Yeah. Just assess your situation, know what you want to do. Just because Jay wanted, like, I wanted football as much as Jay did. Yeah. It's just that his situation was very different to mine. Yeah. So, yeah, that's all, all I've got to say on that. This one's quite a long question, so make sure you're listening. Ready? Mm -hmm. Are you ready? I'm ready. I've been training every morning for about two months. I was seeing massive improvements at the start, but I feel like my individual training sessions are not progressing me further, and I've hit a stop. I was also playing very well in games, but I've had a dip in form for the past few weeks, and I always find myself very frustrated. Any tips to progress? That comes in from Nav Panda. Nav Panda. Nav Panda. So, training two months every morning, he was seeing massive improvements. Now, look, he's not progressing. How can he progress? Is he training in you know, team training as well? I don't know. I, I hope. Yeah. Uh, because, I, in my opinion, if you're doing individual training for two months, you can get very good at something. It's like training... It's like making Milo for two months. You're gonna only, you can only get so good at it. Yeah. Like, your ability can only get so good. You can't catch up. Like, you can't go... From here to Ronaldo in a day. Exactly. Like you, you have to work your way up, and then once you get good at passing, or in your head good at passing, then you move to dribbling, and then you good at and, dribbling, you move to shooting. Yeah, and the thing is, like, you know those 20 shots I do in the vlogs, where yeah. it's 20 shots? Let's say I slowly start moving up because I improve, obviously. Yeah. So I go 5, then I get 8, then I get 12, and then I go 12, 12, 12. That's just normal. Mm. Like, remember the comment someone left and said, pros are going to get 
17. 17? No, it was more than that. I swear it was, it was like, 17 out of 20 or something. 17 out of 20. That's like tough. And on, a, on your weaker foot as well. Are you mad? I'll put a goalkeeper in there as well. And yeah. See how many so <laughs> I think like with that, you not, some days you get 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, and you'll get an average. Mm. And then you might get 15 and then you might get six. Yeah. Like it just depends on the day. You're not necessarily hitting a stop. No. You're kind of just where you are. Like, like you said, Ronaldo wasn't built in a day. Exactly. Um, and two months isn't a very long time. No way. In two months is nothing. <laughs> like, that is, man. Just I'm, stick with it. Yeah, legit. Just stick with Maybe it. Maybe change up a few ear drills. Just stick with it and you'll, mm. you'll see improvements. And then, so he's had a dip in form the past few weeks and he finds himself very frustrated. How would you deal with a dip in form? I don't know. I, oh, you'd never have a dip in form. No, but <laughs> when I have a dip in form, I, I, um, I, cha- I change something. So I change the way yeah. I do things. Or like, I, yeah, d- like that's something I do actually. Without thinking about it, I've changed what I eat sometimes if yeah. I have a dip in form. If, I, if I'm having a really good run of form, I'll eat the same stuff. Or, yeah, yeah, it's just the way I am. I and I saw something before, you know Basway. Yeah. He, di- you know how he dyed the front of his hair blonde? Mm. So he dyed the front of his hair blonde, and then they lost or they drew the other day and he didn't score it and he said, no goal, no win, goodbye blonde hair. Yeah. So because he had that blonde in his hair, it was just something he felt had to go because mm. he didn't perform. Mm. Um, at, the I, end, at the end of the day, a dip in form is just a mental thing. Exactly. And I was going to say, I don't necessarily ever think I have a dip in form because mm. I'm not wired like that. I kind of just go, well, I'm just playing football. like. Mm. I might not have scored a goal for a couple of weeks, but I'm going to score one soon. Yeah. <laughs> so that's how I would do it. It's very much mental. Yeah. Very much. So, guys, that is going to conclude this episode of Hashtag Ask Tweety. If you did enjoy it, make sure you leave a like. Subscribe if you're around here. Oh, my goodness. If you did enjoy it, make sure you leave a like. Subscribe if you're around here. Join the Hashtag Ask Tweety family. I'll see you in tomorrow's video. Bye. Listen. Listen.